And on this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. We have a front facing camera, rear facing camera, and a cabin camera with night vision. We also get GPS and more. First, I'm gonna show you what you get inside of the box when you purchase one of these M3 mirror dash cams. Then I'm gonna walk you through its features. And finally, we're gonna take a look at some test drive footage, both at day and at night, to see how well it actually performs. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you want to get one. But with that being said, let's take a look at the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. And this dash cam is of the 12 inch category. And as you can see, this is going to look and act like a normal mirror when the LCD panel is off. When the LCD panel is on, this thing is going to turn into a touchscreen. You'll also notice that from the factory, Rexin has installed a glare reducer on this dash cam. Now, if you do not want that glare reducer, you are able to remove that film if the Desire. And on the front of the dash cam, we have a full high definition imaging sensor and it has been paired with a 170 degree field of view lens. And you can also see how we can aim the sensor if we wanted to adjust our view angle. Moving to the top of the dash cam, we have a mini USB connector for power. Then we have a 2.5 millimeter plug for the rear camera. And then we have the memory card slot. The Rexin M3 mirror dash cam supports memory cards as large as 256 gigabytes. And on the bottom of the dash cam, we have a single power on power off button. And the cabin camera also records in high definition and it has been equipped with a 170 degree field of view lens. Now the cabin camera also supports through night vision, which means that this thing can see in full darkness. And also the cabin camera can be adjusted. We can move that left, right, up and down so we can get the best possible view of the cabin. And to mount the mirror dash cam to our vehicle, I'm gonna place the dash cam on top of the mirror. Then I'm gonna use the two included silicone straps to secure the LCD dash cam to the mirror by attaching one here and then attaching the other one over here, effectively hiding the original OM mirror from the car and leaving me with an LCD mirror dash cam. And here's what the rear camera looks like. It is also able to record in full high definition and has also been equipped with a 170 degree field of view lens. Now the camera is waterproof, so this could potentially be installed outside of the vehicle or it could be installed inside of the vehicle. They have provided two ways of mounting the camera, one of them being with this double-sided tape that can get applied right here. I can peel that and then stick this to my vehicle. The second way of installing Installing that camera would be to use the included screws to secure the bracket to the car. And to connect the rear camera to the main dash cam, they have included this extension cable with that 2.5 millimeter plug on one end, and it has this optional red wire. Connecting this red wire to the reversing tail lights of our vehicle will enable the optional reverse guidelines, which I'll show you when I get to the demo portion of this review. And to power the dash cam, they have included the cigarette lighter adapter plug with a right angle mini USB connector. Now, Rexing has done something interesting with the power adapter because they have integrated the GPS antenna into the same cable, which effectively reduces the number of cables that we have to run to install this dash cam. And here's a close-up of that GPS antenna. It has been provided with double-sided tape in case I want to peel this and stick this somewhere in my car so it's not moving around. We also get a bag of cable clips in case we wanted to secure any loose wires, and we get a mini spatula to help with the installation, and we get a mini USB cable in case we wanted to connect the dash cam directly to our computer. And finally, we get a safety guide, and we get a contact card in case we need to get a hold of Rexin for any kind of tech support, and we also get a warranty card. Most mirror dash cams only include a 12-month warranty. If you activate your warranty, Rexin will give you 18 months of warranty. And finally, we get a user manual that shows us the contents of the kit and how the dash cam can be installed on a vehicle, as well as the basic functionality and how to use these different features. But now that I show you the contents of the kit, let's move over to the vehicle so we can check out the rest of the features. And we'll begin with the startup test. One, two, three. Normally the dash cam is gonna turn on automatically, but I like to do this so we can get a time on the startup sequence. How long does it actually take before it shows me the rear view? And here it is. Here's the Rexin M3 dash cam. And as you can see, it's automatically gonna start recording. You can see that indicated by the red blinking dot. And also on the lower left corner, we have a compass and we have our miles per hour. Now currently we are looking at the rear view. However, I am able to change views. This is the front view. 
If I swipe one more time, now we have a triple view where I have the front view, cabin, and the rear. And if I swap one more time, we get the rear and the cabin. Swipe one more time, we get the front and the cabin. Swipe one more time, we get the front and the rear. Swipe one more time, we get the cabin. And by the way, these views are adjustable so I could slide up and down to see any particular area of interest. Slide that one more time and we're back to the rear, which again is adjustable. I can slide on the screen and adjust the view to find the best spot that works for me. But also, this mirror supports parking assist. Notice what happens when I put the car onto reverse. So as you can see, the view came down just a little bit and now we have parking guidelines. Now these guidelines are gonna help us to park and maneuver so we don't hit the sidewalk or any potential vehicles. But also notice what happens when I put the car back onto D. The view is automatically returning to the rear view and this is enabled by connecting that extra optional wire to the reversing taillights of the car. So it's an optional feature where you don't have to use it. It's only if your car doesn't have parking assist. But let's also talk about the icons on the bottom. This one right here allows us to stop the recording if for some reason we didn't want to have any evidence of where we've been. And if I tap that one more time, we begin recording again. The next icon is a little camera that allows us to take a picture. It's kind of neat. I mean, we have the video, but if you wanted to have just a picture, you definitely can. The next icon that looks like a little lock right here allows us to flag a video. Perhaps we saw something interesting. Perhaps we saw a meteor or a reindeer pass by in front of us. By flagging that video, we're going to be able to find it a lot easier among the many hours of video that this dash can potentially record. The next icon that we have is a little microphone right here. If we want to have some kind of top circuit conversation, we can temporarily mute the audio. So right now we are only recording video. And if I want to enable the microphone again, so we record audio, I can just tap on that icon one more time. Now you saw how I changed views by sliding on the screen. You can also do that with these little arrows. If I type, tap on those, the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to cycle through the different views. So it's just another way of changing the views that are provided in the system. The next icon allows me to adjust the brightness. Now this is one of the few mirror dash cams that I don't run at a full brightness. Most of them I do. But I take a look at this. I'm actually running this on the middle. I could bring it at full blast but it doesn't really seem to need full blast for me. I bring it just a little bit below the full blast. The next icon right here allows us to play back the prior videos that we recorded. Now, as you can see, they have been pre-sorted in here. So we have normal videos. Then we have the videos that we flagged as interesting videos. Now also videos where that you may have been involved in a potential car crash are gonna be right here. Photos get their own folder and if you enable the parking monitor feature on this car, if there was an incident when your car was parked, this is where we will find those videos. Now we could play those videos back directly on this dash cam, or we can take the memory card out, take it to our computer and download them that way. But let's take a look at some of the features of this dash cam by going into the settings menu. First off, we can see that we are recording all three cameras in full high definition. Now you could choose to lower that to standard high definition if you wanted to fit more in your memory card, but I like to run mine at the maximum resolution. Next up, we have the G sensor. This is what allows this dash cam to detect that you got into a car crash. And when it senses that, it's going to flag the video so you can find it a lot easier in the future. We can turn this feature off completely or we can turn it on with three levels of sensitivity low, middle, or high. This dash cam also supports parking monitoring. However, it requires a hardwire kit. But if the dash cam is hardwired, we get three choices of how to run that parking monitor. We can have that completely off. We can have it in time-lapse mode where it records many hours of video and compresses that or we can run it on the G-Sensor mode. On the G-Sensor mode, the dash cam is only going to turn on when the car is impacted. Very similar to the G-Sensor when you are driving and it detects a car crash. This is very similar except that it is going to detect a car crash or somebody crashing into your car when the car is parked. We can also choose to add our license plate to the video that's being recorded or in my case, I put a fun name on here. But one neat feature I like about this dash cam is the daylight savings time. This dash cam is 
automatically pulling the date and time from the GPS, but I happen to live in a state that changes the time when we go into daylight savings time. So instead of having to manually adjust for that one hour difference, I can turn this function on or off depending if I'm in daylight savings time or not. But I do want to show you how much there is to customize on this dash cam. Pretty much every single thing you wanted to customize is available on here, including a screensaver feature. If for some reason you wanted to have the mirror turn off just the screen but continue recording you can set a timer in here and if you do set a timer this is going to turn off and look and act like a normal mirror while you're still recording in what i call stealth mode but there's one more way to turn off the screen temporarily while we're still recording and that is by tapping the power button on the bottom of the mirror and if at any point in time i want to bring up the screen again i can just tap that button one more time and the screen turns on but i also mentioned that the parking assist lines are adjustable and that is done on this screen and as you can see right here you can do quite a bit of adjustments on the lines now this feature as simple as it sounds it is very very helpful because some cars do need a lot of adjustment so if you have a static guidelines that are not adjustable or sometimes just a preset maybe there's two or three presets they may not necessarily match your vehicle here you can tweak them exactly to match your car or you can also adjust them if you want to give yourself a little bit of extra room for error and when you're done you can just click back with the back arrow but now that I showed you the main features of this dash cam, let's take it out for a test ride so we can get some actual test footage both at day and at night to see how well it actually performs. Well, let's also test out the built-in microphone on the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. And this is a sound test of the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. And I am in the back seat behind the driver's side and I'm going for a ride. And this is a sound test of the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. I am standing outside of the driver's side door and I'm gonna give you a ticket.
and that was the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam. Now, who is this dash cam for? I think the dash cam is going to be great for anybody who's looking for a full size mirror dash cam that is 12 inches in terms of the screen size, but also for anybody who's looking for three channels to be able to capture the cabin. This is especially helpful for people who are working in the ride share industry like Lyft or Uber and want to capture the cabin. And even if you're not in the ride share industry, having a cabin camera capture the video internally in the car can come in very handy later on to prove evidence of what you were doing behind the wheel when an incident or such as an accident took place. And this brings me to what I think is the best feature on the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam, and that is the ability to turn the cabin camera in any given direction. This is extremely helpful if you're trying to capture interactions with anybody such as a a triple letter enforcement agency that may be leaning into your window and all of a sudden they come in from the left, you turn the camera, they come in from the right, you can turn the camera and get a full recording of what's happening on the outside of your vehicle. Normally, most three channel dash cam setups have a cabin camera that is somewhat set, so we are able to adjust maybe the tilt up or down, or maybe just a little bit to the left or just a little bit to the right, but I have not seen one like this where you can literally turn it pretty much almost fully to 90 degrees into the left or 90 degrees to the right, which can give us, again, a tremendous coverage of the outside of the vehicle. Now, where do I think the mirror dash cam can do better? Well, that is going to be in the power adapter. I like the idea of having the GPS antenna built in so it reduces the number of cables that have to be routed in the vehicle. However, they have to add a ferrite, which is this little bump that you see in the cable here, to reduce any interference from reaching the camera. Now, unfortunately, this ferrite is probably going to be visible after installation because it's not going to be easy to hide this thing under the headliner of the vehicle. Now, here's a nice thing. This ferrite can potentially be removed because it has little clips that unsnap and then this can come off entirely or it could be relocated further down towards a cigarette lighter adapter so it's not easily seen and it's not hanging unsightly right next to the mirror. Now I normally see this little guy anytime that they are combining a GPS antenna with the power source but I really wish this thing could be completely eliminated or maybe they could install it up front closer to the cigarette lighter adapter so we don't have to worry about pulling this off and moving it down here. But overall I think this dash cam is going to be a great package for anybody who's looking to maximize the amount of video coverage around your vehicle. So remember, I put a link to the Rexin M3 mirror dash cam in the description down below in case you wanna get one. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.